In part 4 of our cube building tutorial, I will show you how a 3D printer produces a print in place joint using deliciously dried out pappardelle. Well, I speak the most Italian, so. And then I will give you some ideas on how to customize your fidget cube and make it super. As the extruder head and the bed move, the plastic oozes out of the extruder in a continuous speed, coming out like a sticky wet noodle that hardens immediately when it exits. Once a layer is complete, the extruder moves upward along the z-axis and lays down the next layer on top of the old one, slowly building up your 3D model one layer at a time. Now there are some important considerations when 3D printing. For starters, you want to avoid large overhangs. If I try to print a bridge between these two legs, the noodle will sag. But if the two legs are sufficiently close to one another, you can create a bridge or an overhang with minimal sag. Now if you take this understanding to the next level, you can model a special kind of joint called a print-in-place joint, which is essential for the function of our fidget cube. Watch how the fidget cube is built up from this view. If you look carefully, you will notice that the hinges are completely separate from the blocks. The blocks and the hinges are not physically joined. To understand how this works, let's pause the cube build here. See how the nib of the block is being built up but there's no hinge yet? Now when we lay down the next layer of the hinge, it is literally printed on thin air. This layer falls to meet the block component below, about 0.2 millimeters. Notice that it's a little janky but when the next layer prints out, it is able to print on top of the janky layer and come out a little cleaner. The next layers that lay on top gradually correct further, making a functional print-in-place joint. If you really get how to use this concept, you can use it for other print-in-place joint applications. Alright, now it's time to customize our cube. Let's add some fun art to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a surface to sketch on, uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is activate our block component by coming over here. And now the block is active, the hinge is inactive, and I'm going to click Create Sketch, and I'm going to click this side surface here. And now here's what we're going to do. An image you want to insert on here has to be an SVG or a scalable vector graphic. So. You probably don't have these off the top of your head in your computer, so you might be tempted to look up free ones on the internet. And you might say, hey, I want like Mario SVGs. So I'd look up, don't, don't, don't pay attention to the waifu part. Um, you might look up free Mario SVG. And then you would be tempted to click on one of these websites and you'd, let's just do it don't get anything from these websites, okay? <laughs> I mean, some of them might work out, but chances are they are loaded with trackers, etc. cetera. Uh, let's just stay away from those. So if you want to get any free SVGs, the place you should do it is here. So free Mario S... Well, you don't have to put free Mario. You could just put Mario SVG. So at Wikimedia Commons is a place where you can look up, well, free SVGs. And um, this doesn't look like the image I'm looking for. Um, but notice a lot of these are just, you know, mm, the title. I mean, here's this you could put on your cube. That's not very interesting. So you're a little limited here. Uh, we could go my other favorite franchise, Halo SVG. And you could find some cool emblems. Like this could work. I could put that on my cube. Um, but a lot of these don't seem like they're gonna work. So, a place you should go if you wanna get SVGs is I'd recommend go to Etsy, um, pay these artists uh, their $1.50 that they're demanding for you for something like, uh, I don't know how many images this is, like 300 or something images. That's a fair amount to pay. And you're paying an artist. It goes to the artist directly, that's lovely. So, I'm gonna use one of these images I found here. So let's go back to Fusion. And we're going to go to the top right corner and click Insert. And then Insert SVG. And then 
wherever you downloaded it to. So I'm gonna find it, insert from my computer. And we're gonna go here to cube build. I know I have one of them here. And uh, I clicked insert it. And you might be like, where did it go? Well, here it is. You have to zoom all the way out and here's Luigi. So he's ginormous. A lot of these SVGs are gonna come very large scale. Uh, scalable vector graphics are exactly that. They're scalable, so they don't lose resolution no matter how big or small you make them. So the way you drag it around is you click this center square and move it. And I can diminish its size like this. So I grab this little like quarter circle icon. I click it and I drag. That makes it larger or smaller. And I'll put it there. And I'll go there. So I'm just resizing it and approximately placing it in place. I'm going to go like this. And I want it to fill the entire cube. Uh, like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Once you've got it to size, you're going to click OK. Now, this is not the tricky bit, just a bit to pay attention to. What's cool is when you pick your SVGs, you got to be kind of slick about it because otherwise you're going to be clicking lots of things. I picked this one specifically because it's very easy. I'm going to click. First of all, I'm going to click E4 extrude. And then now I'm going to click the entire outside. I'm going to hold shift and click his L. Click there. Actually, you don't need to hold shift here. And I'm going to click these other internal parts. Boom, boom. And then I'm going to click, uh, then I'm going to dial in the extrusion. I'm going to dial it in negative 0.6 and then hit enter. And there you are. There is Luigi extruded onto our cube, which is super cool looking. And I found 0.6 is a good amount to, um, especially when you're printing it from a side profile to get the depth to show up but not um, create issues, because if you extrude it too much inward, you're going to have overhang problems. All right, similar to adding SVGs, you can customize your cube or anything with text. So we could do that as well. So I'm going to scroll back here. I'm going to go to a top view, and I'm going to click Create Sketch, and I'm going to click this cube right here, I don't like that it rotated me. I'm going to rotate it like that. Okay. So now we're going to put text on here. So the way you do that is you go to create your drop down menu and then you're going to go to text. And now I'm going to click where, well, the box that I want to draw my text within. So I'm going to click this top left corner and I'm going to click again when it snaps to the bottom right corner. You're going to be like, oh my God, it's completely out of proportion, easily fixable. So like, let's just say I was going to put my initials here, W for Will. And you're going to notice it's off center, no big deal. So go down here to alignment. You're going to go to align center uh, horizontally and align center or line middle vertically. And that looks pretty good. It's a little bit oversized. That's okay. I'm also going to bold it. So I'm going to click bold. And that actually centered it or, you know, brought the W's in. I'm going to make it text size 9. That looks pretty good. How about 9.5? Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to click OK. Now, similarly, uh, I want to extrude this because right now it's just a profile. It's not, it's not actual geometry yet. So I'm going to click E for extrude. I'm going to click my W. And it, let's go same thing, negative 0.6. There you go. And so you can put your you know, initials across the cube. If you want to be really clever with this, one of the things I challenge my students to do is once you fold the cube, you know, you can put your initials here. So like, let's say I put W-I-L-L, -L, right? So the challenge is how would you orient your initials such that when you folded the cube over, when this side meets this side, it spells your name top, bottom, left to right. Just something fun to think about. All right, I want to go over some quick alterations you can do to your cube and kind of remind you how the timeline works. So come down your timeline and I'm going to grab the playhead and I'm going to drag it and drop it right 
here, right in front of the fillet. And I'm going to right click the fillet and I'm going to click delete. So now we're all the way back when we've made the first cube and we've got rid of the rounded edge. So instead of a fillet, let's apply a chamfer. So I'm going to click modify and then scroll third one down from the top, chamfer. And I'm going to apply, I'm going to click this edge and then I'm going to select all 12 edges just like we did prior. Look at your right menu, helps you keep track of what you've clicked on. So yeah, let's click all 12 edges. And one of us. Okay. And I'm going to chamfer these all three millimeters. And then make sure type is set to equal distance, corner type chamfer, click OK. Now I'm going to click, come down to the timeline again, drag the playhead all the way to the right. And there you go. This will also work. So now you have a different looking fidget cube with um, kind of these square edges, is that the right word? I don't know, flat edges, how about that? All right, now it's time to export this for 3D printing. So do not do the following. You might be tempted to go up here to file and then select 3D print. I don't recommend doing it this way, it runs you into some troubles. So what I would recommend instead is you go to your main, in your browser bar, select the main name of your entire thing, not one of the components, and I'm going to right click over it. I'm going to scroll down to save as mesh. This is the better way to do it. And uh, the settings you want are as follows, STL binary, millimeter, refinement set to not medium but high. Don't know how much of a difference this makes, but why not? And I have sent to 3D print utility automatically checked. You will have to um, associate Fusion with your 3D printing utility. Mine's associated with my Prusa. And then I'm going to click OK. And it's going to open it up. This is going to be completely not the right proportions, no matter how many times I do it. So that's OK. I'm going to resize it. And there you go. Now you can see what I'm seeing well. OK. And now we're set for 3D printing. Um, I set this for 0.2 millimeter layers. So make sure your layer height is set to 0.2 millimeters. Uh, select the appropriate um, filament you're using. Uh, I've done it both with PETG and PLA. I've had a little better success with PLA. I find it a little less sticky. Um, you don't need supports of any sort. Um, you can just use the original presets if you're on a Prusa. And then you're going to slice it. And basically, right after that, you would click um, Export G Code, and you would just throw it on your flash drive and then load that into your printer. Or, of course, you could export it, uh, you know, using a USB cable. So that's it. Um, you have, I've taken you through every single step. Oh, one thing real quick. Um, I made, obviously, a ginormous cube. One of the quick ways you can do that, it still works, is in Slicer, if I go here, I can just scale the whole thing. And I think I scaled, they're all locked. I think I scaled the whole thing up 250. Oh, there we go, locked. Yeah, 250. That is as big as a print that will fit on my printer bed. And um, that's about it. So that's if you want to make it ginormous size. Um, you will run into some encounters because, again, I set things for layer height of 0.2 millimeters. And so, like, how it prints here will be a little wonky, but it'll still work and fold pretty beautifully. And, all right, everybody, that's it. You've completed your first 3D printing tutorial. Um, I'm going to be doing way more tutorials in the future on uh, physics, math, uh, programming. I'll teach you how to program your first video game using sprites. Uh, I'm going to teach you robotics. So, hope you tune in. Do all that like and subscribe nonsense because um, I have a lot more I want to share with you all, and I hope to see you all in the future. All right, bye-bye.